Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are across the known world, and welcome back to another exciting interview with The Crown Between Two Roses. I'm Countess Beatrice. And I'm Queen Engelin. Um, today we are interviewing Baron Grimm and Baroness Alexandra of Southern Guard. <laughs> Um, before we kick off into the questions, I'd just like to do the acknowledgement um, that we like to do at the beginning of each episode. Uh, so, good nobles, we come here together in a spirit of fellowship, deepening of our skills, sharing of our knowledge, and a shared interest in the search to find truth through experimental archaeology and historical inquiry. It is in this context that I, Engelin, on behalf of my kingdom, acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands upon which we gather. We recognize their continuing connection to land and culture, and we pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging, and the elders from other communities who may be here today. Oh, thank you very much. I don't know what's going on with my technology. It's always challenging. Uh, welcome, Your Excellencies. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, you are the Baron and Baroness of Southern Guard. Where is that located mundanely? Uh, it's in the South Island of New Zealand. So does and your barony take up the whole South Island? Yeah, and a little bit of Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> so I get political. <laughs> <laughs> Got to put that claim in there, absolutely. <laughs> no. So how long has, um, has Southern Guard been a barony? Southern Guard was made a barony in 1995, I believe. 95? Sounds right. Sounds right. Yeah, I, think so. <laughs> um, I usually judge SCA dates based on how old my daughter was at the time. So I'm pretty sure, <laughs> pretty sure she was two and a half. So that's been 1995. <laughs> so now everyone knows how old your daughter is. I love 27. <laughs> I, I was a child bride. <laughs> So back when, when that happened, you weren't part of Lockhart at the time. No, no, we were part of Kaid. We were, and, and um, yeah, it was, it was a different sort of time for us. It was quite interesting. Um, I suppose in times of COVID, we've got, we've almost had a, a, a training run for dealing with the isolation away from our kingdom, you know, the main part of our kingdom. But yeah, it's, um, it's a bit of our heritage that we actually hold very close to our hearts and treasure. And it's quite unique in the SBA to, to have been in one kingdom and then moved to another. Been in two kingdoms, but only one barony. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that really is. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the, how your name and device for the barony came to be? Well, the, the Southern Guard I don't, it doesn't really have an origin story so much as it was the southernmost point of Kaid. Um, and so they had us here as the, as the defence against the West over there in Lockhart. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, the, the guard is in meaning city and south, southern meaning the southern, southern point, so southern city. So like yeah. Mickle Guard, we're Southern Guard, yeah. Nice. And, and your device? Yeah, so the device is the tower with the three mullets above it. Um, so yeah, again, it just signifies that guard post in the southern waters, protecting the, protecting the border of the mainland. <laughs> and your device has something unique, which no other barony in Lockhart has. Oh, it's not on there because it's our cloak. <laughs> 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 yeah, we have an augmentation of arms with the Caden cross in the corner. So that takes up the, the corner of the one side of, your, of the barony device. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a nice connection to repeat. Absolutely. And from, from a, a Lockhart point of view, there are no other baronies that have that augmentation. Do you know um, how that came to be? Um, through a lot of hard work, if I remember rightly. 
Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I don't. Yeah. So I don't even. I know. I know some of the people who were involved at the end when it finally happened, but I don't. Even, I don't even know where that started. I think there um, were a lot of connections with Kaid that were remaining very strong over time. And when we, uh, after a period of time, Kaid believed that even though we were no longer part of them, that they wanted to gift us that acknowledgement of, of the part we'd played in them as much as they'd played in us. Oh, that's lovely. So at, at that time, was Southern Guard the whole of New Zealand or um, was there always that separation with the two islands? Uh, yeah, it's, it's only been, it's only ever been the South Island um, as the barony. Um, there was probably a time when it was the only group in New Zealand, but so therefore <laughs> kind of was, but. Um, I, th I think early on there was an understanding that any more than the South Island of New Zealand would be a bit too much to handle in a baronial sense or any baron of yeah. yeah, there were questions whether it was too big anyway. But, but. <laughs> how, how long does it take to drive from one point to the other? Uh, 12 hours. Maybe 13. Yeah. But that's, that's yeah, 12 hours from... City to city. And that's without breaks. That's there's, just... Yeah, there's plenty of dirt after then. <laughs> <laughs> Is that going over lots and lots of hills or? Yeah. Yeah, a couple of mountain ranges. <laughs> oh, I mean, you can come down the coast and that, but you still windy roads. <laughs> and a this, bit of water as well. Yeah, there's straightening at all. So it's going to be different. But... Yeah, because yeah, when. Sorry, we incorporate no. two smaller groups, one being Wildmoor, which is in Dunedin, so it takes up sort of the south of the South Island, and then Gildenwick, which is Gildenwick, which is in the north and based around Nelson area, and that um, deals with a lot of the northern activity. So it's kind of split into three. Yeah. Largely, yeah, so. and we try to get to events in Wildmore, obviously, and building work as often as possible, even this year. <laughs> We've been to an event in each direction, so that's nice. Yeah. I think it's a, it's interesting because we always think of New Zealand as the little island, and to know that it takes 12 hours to drive just one of the islands from tip to tip is mind-blowing because that's how long it would take for us to drive from one city to one city, um, really. Yeah, but probably... Well, I mean, New Zealand as a whole, our, from from top to bottom in New Zealand is not that different from the east coast of Australia. It's just we're, we're skinny and <laughs> <laughs> you guys are a bit wider. <laughs> just a bit. <laughs> With your That's origin. Size of Japan. If that helps. Or England. <laughs> So with your origins stemming from Kaid, are there any traditions that uh, have hung around from that time that would be different to some of the Lockhart ones that we inherited from the West? Yes. But, <laughs> but, but Do we get hard, to hear them or are they secret? It's hard for us to say what they are because culturally they're norms for us. Um, and even when we travel, it's like, is this a cultural thing or is this a one-off or something you don't necessarily know? It's something that... There's a formality in the way that we do things here. I mean, there's a real um, thing. I, I, we've had, I, apparently crowns are warned. I don't know if you can, you can answer to the single and say, <laughs> when you approach, we all stand up. And it doesn't matter if we're sitting around a campfire or in a feast hall or obviously in court, but, you know, everybody stands up and it's straight up on your feet, thank you. <laughs> and I think that can be a bit unnerving to people that have come from... <laughs> I, I experienced that uh, on a, a royal visit to Ildhafen where I stood up to leave the room and everyone stands up which yeah. is not not the standard norm here. Yeah, 
yeah, and, yeah. and uh, things like that is they are they are a Kaiden tradition, I suppose. That is, is, that formal acknowledgement of the crown is really important to us. And yeah. we have a couple of couple of uh, relics and stuff that are still hanging around from Kaiden days. That yeah. We're, we're slowly, there's a lot of relics that haven't seen the light of day in many years, and we're slowly collecting them and, and then try and release them back into the wild. <laughs> it's yeah. definitely very cool. I would I'd love to see some because like, it is such an important part of the history of Loch Ark, and I think um, we don't hear, on the, on the Australian side, we don't hear nearly as many stories as, as we'd love to. Like, it's just there's this whole rich history and I guess until really this year we haven't had a lot of that um, cultural exchange and and stories from from the past that we've we've had a lot more access to uh, now that we're having these conversations so um, yeah bring out the relics we'd love to to take a look yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah now we've got a talk that was buried in the mists of time pretty much and it's just appeared over the last month or so and I think that we're thinking that we might make that um, a an award for a tournament of some sort and um, maybe something for, for unbelted or newcomers or something to that end you know a bit of bling yeah <laughs> <laughs> <Lovely>. <laughs> <laughs> so are there any any traditions uh, wherever their or origins are from that um, you guys love or that, that means something to you personally? None that I can put a mind to right now. Um, I guess I, I always feel really proud when I see my barony acting the way I just described, you know, that formality and that acknowledgement and how much we love our crown. doesn't matter who they are. We just love our crown. And we did back in the days of Kaid, and we do now, and we have since we became a part of Lock Ark. Lovely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is very special. It's um, one of the things I think I first visited in the first rain was like our, our second event or something. And um, it blew me away just how the formalities and um, I guess the authenticity was so different to what I was used to. Um, it's like you you play the game seriously. It's <laughs> it's all it's all in <laughs> over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it can be really um, easy to get bogged down in that in that seriousness. And every now and then we've got to in, allow the frivolity and silliness to take over, which is um, yeah, I think hopefully something that we can encourage. We've got lots of people creating shenanigans all over the place. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you have hedgehogs. We do. For us, that's the absolute novelty. <laughs> I think bunnies are better. <laughs> <laughs> um, so your barony actually hosts the second largest annual event in our kingdom. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yes. I've been to one or two. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we have Canterbury Fair, which... It's usually about eight or nine days long. Um, they've been up to 10 days long, I think, in the various times. Um, yeah, it's great fun. We we have all the usual things, dances and feasts and fighting and fencing and shooting yeah. and drinking. Singing. And <laughs> I, I, like the, I like it that the, the event is as long as it is because you can really sink into that experience and the whole place by halfway through the week has become a village and you know there's the crafting area and you know where to go if you want to do some singing at night and you know what to do you know there's you f you can find your niche really wonderfully yeah. in it yeah yeah, yeah. I, I do and, need to know now that you're sitting on the the thrones of southern guard are you still going to get up at silly o'clock in the morning to make the spice buns no no <laughs> no, we, we tried that this year step up here and we tried to bake and we lasted two days and we just said no and poor Grim, Grim's poor apprentice Thorold 
had to sit there and get up every morning by himself at 5 30 and say <laughs> all the buns and bread. Was, we were kind of prepared for that. It's still, he was a legend. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> and we're not going to put him through that again. <laughs> Can you tell our audience what what you actually generally do when you're not B&B at Canterbury Fair? Uh, um, out of work or in work? <laughs> <laughs> the buns. The bun. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, we bake honey apple spice buns every morning. Oh, that's at fair. Yeah. Know fair. What at fair? Yeah. At fair, yes. Yeah. And so they come out hot and get delivered around the camps and, yeah, we, butter and honey and apple and, and bread. And, and we always employ the children to do the deliveries and the sales. Um, we've done that right since Charlotte, my, uh, Rosetta, my daughter, um, was was still playing. She She was delivering buns until she was 15 years old from the age of about six. Yeah, like <laughs> so we did, we did it for 20 years. Um, yeah. We had, had two years <laughs> off. It's time to, to, yeah, train some newbies. Oh, well, we did, we did that, but then we brought them into our household and they haven't got the time off. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's good. And uh, Grim Fight. Obviously, he fights heavy, does a bit of archery. I just roam around the arts and sciences classes and sit on the side of the lift field and watch him fight. Um, I get a lot of joy out of watching. She goes hobnobbing. I do. <laughs> well, I do now. I can, I can <laughs> hobnob. <laughs> but no, I, I just like chatting with people and get, finding what people are into, especially finding newcomers. I love finding newcomers and... and getting all enthused about their things. <laughs> oh, lovely. Yeah. I do love the energy of a newcomer. <laughs> I'm into it. I have no idea what it is, but I am totally into it. <laughs> yes. Come with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, Grimm's now doing the newcomer combat. So um, that's really kicking into gear over here. We had... Um, as part of our monthly tournaments last weekend, we had three youth combatants doing a round robin, which was awesome. <laughs> and they had a combined travel total of 11 hours to get there. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so one family came down from Nelson and another one came up from Pleasant Point, which is two and a half hours south of Christchurch. Um, all those children have got really um, supportive parents that are really encouraging of their kids' enthusiasm for sports. So, yeah. So for, for those yeah. who might not be aware, can you give us a little bit of a rundown of where youth combat sits between boffer and heavy and what kind of ages and um, how it's different? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we should, so, we, you should probably introduce yourself as the... Deputy. Oh, de oh, okay. <laughs> I, this, this is me speaking as the Deputy Earl Marshal for Youth Arm and Combat. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, the difference between Boffer and Youth Arm and Combat, I can't quite think of an instant nutshell, but to put it simply, um, Boffer kids can grab and use in their own time and under their own rule sets and, you know, whatever they make up. If they want to go and play, they can go and play. Youth Army Combat is the same as any other combat in the FCA. You've got to have a martial present. You've got to be authorised to fight a tournament. Um, and it's got the extra layers, of course, of having youth involved as well. Um, so, yeah, it's much more structured and is more, yeah, more of a competition. It's with tournaments. So they're armoured up? Yep. So they it's divided into age divisions. Um, the young ones have to wear pretty much a canvas and, and maybe some knee pads and a helmet. So all rebels wear a helmet. Uh, and probably, yeah, a pair of gloves. Um, and then it goes on up through to putting rigid hockey pads on your knees and elbows and a kidney belt and up to pretty much fully armoured 
well, there is there is a youth retain category, which is with full full heavy equipment and pretty much what we call three quarter is a heavy fighter, so low calibration but high speed. And the age is at six. Yeah. yeah. So six to <laughs> six uh, to eight. Yeah, so, but yeah, six to sixteen it goes through. Um, okay. And obviously, mm -hmm. age between fourteen you can start authorizing for heavy. Um, and you can. So as you advance through the divisions, that's based not just on your age, also by other factors like if you're massive or really good or vice versa, um, you know, for your age, so you don't have to advance. And then at the in the older categories, once they authorise heavy, you, they're not allowed to fight the assembly combat anymore. Okay. That sounds great. There's a lot of second generation and um, new families that are, are coming through joining us. So it's such a, a good activity that um, will keep all of those youths engaged. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that's it. And they can still go and pick up a golfer and go and play. It doesn't change that at all. Um, just means that when, especially as, as a steward hosting an event and you have a tournament, and you have a buffer tournament and there's no real, we've got no written rules, there's no real structure behind it. And if the kid gets injured or something and then it starts coming back up the line, it's not so good. Whereas whereas the army combat's got all that we followed the procedures. It's protocols. Yeah, we did what we what we could. So awesome. So very much looking at safety and risk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In that youth space. And, and, also and liability. <laughs> yeah. And there's also a real focus. The youth that are into it are into it as a pathway to fight and heavy. Yeah. And so even um, you know, eight year old girls, you know, are on the path to becoming heavy. And I think that's going to be fantastic. Um if, if a young lady can start training at the age of, you know, six and and um authorize when she's sixteen, what sort of fighter is she going to be? Yeah. You know, so or we, he or they. <laughs> oh yeah. We did a demonstration at a scout hall the other month, which I thought was gonna be me sort of having half an hour of talking about it and showing them some stuff. But no, that was me taking scouts for two hours. So I had the whole, the whole den. <laughs> and we had enough equipment to get half of them going at a time. So we split the rope and we got them all swinging swords. And then at the end, we armoured four of them up and had them fight. And um, yeah, they loved it. Out of those four, um, two were definitely Ongoing. One of them was the one that came to the tournament on the on the weekend, and another one just couldn't go to that particular tournament and was absolutely gutted. <laughs> I love your passion for oh, it. It's so much. <laughs> just amazing. I've, I've got uh, just taken two commissions for Gambiton for you. So, oh, um, and there's something so cute about making them in miniature. <laughs> 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 So we're actually going to change the subject a little bit now and ask about you guys and your origin stories. So can you tell us how you got into the SCA? Um, okay, I took the easy route. <laughs> uh, I got introduced to it while I was still in high school um, through Rohesia. Mistress Rahesia, she was doing costuming for a school production or something. Um, and yeah, so she talked to us about it. And I went, that sounds awesome. Um, and yeah, I got involved then. So that was probably 1991 or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yes, yeah, so I went to a few fighters practices, went to a few events, Canterbury Feared, learned uh, I did the five hour Vikings in the Narnia event book, um, and rocked along. Yeah, had a ball. And that's that's my origin story. Yeah. What's yours? Um <laughs> I 
dabbled in SCA on and off over a period of about five or six years. When I was a mid-teenager, I, me and my friends stumbled upon a tournament in the middle of nowhere in the countryside. And I saw Sir Cullum fighting in carpet armour and a free on can helmet. <laughs> and um, I thought that looks cool, but I didn't really get into it at all at that stage. But when I got back from overseas and I had my daughter, when she was about three weeks old, um, Mistress Eleonora um, said to me, she's been my friend since we're about seven, so she came to me and said, oh, look, we're having an event. Would you like to come along? springtime you can sit in the sunshine under a blossom tree and Sir Ulf and Sir Sigurd well they weren't Sirs at that stage but Ulf mm -hmm. and Sigurd <laughs> and uh, Cullum and everybody's going to be there fighting and it's going to be fun I'm like, okay and she said I can loan you a frock you know and I was, oh cool and I did exactly that I sat under a blossom tree with my three-year-old a three-week-old baby watched all my old uni friends fighting and this lady wanders up to me and sits down beside me and says, oh, can I hold your, hold your baby for a bit and chat with you? And she chatted with me about why I was there and what I was into. And I didn't know who she was, but we had a great chat. And then Mistress Leonora comes over and she goes, oh, I see you've met the Queen of Kaid. <laughs> 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 and I, from that moment, I was hooked because I thought if somebody can come all that way and take the time to sit with me for half an hour and just see the cat and tell me what she got out of SCA and what she thought I could get out of it and things like that. It was just just a cathartic moment, I guess. It was just like, bing, this is what I want to do and have so ever since. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's where I, why I date from my daughter being, you know, zero, three weeks old. Yeah. So did you meet in the SCA? We met outside of pub in town. <laughs> <laughs> Rob's <laughs> good friend Alvaro, who's in our household, um, he was friends through another club and I'd gone along to a gig with him and a couple of other people and Rob was his old high school friend and he was there as well and we met. And then um, we were friends for about a year or so, I think. And then I invited him to a Christmas thing, you know, Waste and Stray's Christmas morning and... <laughs> Um, he baked and fresh, years later on. He baked well, bread, and I was hooked. <laughs> <laughs> a man that cooks for you. Isn't <laughs> Were you both in the SCA when you met? Yeah. I was. He was on hiatus. <laughs> I did. Oh, okay. So we'd had this weird sort of I I been kind of you know immersed in childcare pretty much for the previous couple of years and hadn't actually met him in the SCA at all, but he had been there. I didn't, didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> and he was, a he, he was a troubled lad, you know, he was the type that would you normally, you normally. Started with me. <laughs> 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 but no. Um, Do each of you. And, um, sorry. Do, do each of you have personas that you've developed over the years? Yes, sort of. <laughs> I'm, I'm... We've, we've, we've got people like that situations. Yeah. We are, but that's about. Yeah. So sure. I'm Alejandra de Santiago. I'm 1580s or thereabouts, um, Santiago de Compostela in Spain. But I've never really, um, I've never really uh, nailed that down. I've never actually worn garb from that period. I go late period, but not actually from there in that period. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm from a uh, 10th century Anglo Scandinavian from Thornby, which is about halfway between New York and um, So just on the on the borderlands of the Dome Wall. Um, and yeah, I've framed up various stories from over the years. Some of them I Some research of them. further. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, completely different personas, completely different eras um, and interests. But um, it's not 
been anything that's um, held us back, and it's actually something that we've focused on in our in our reign, so to speak. Um, that we're ne not going to dress the same, and we're not going to necessarily colour match and things. We want people to know that they can be whatever they want to be in the SCA, and they don't have to, cons you know, be, be prescribed a way of being. So if I want to be Norse, I'll be Norse. And if I want to be Spanish Elizabethan, I'll be Spanish Elizabethan. And, and you're allowed that whim. You're not nailed down to a, to a place if you don't want to be. Which, yeah, we, we think some of those things are the, are the things that the SCA really doesn't have that other groups don't have. Um, you know, if you're in a Norse reenactment group, that's it. Yeah. yeah. It's one of the reasons I do love the SCA. Yeah. 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 So, Grim, you <laughs> are a laurel. Yes. <laughs> I, I am quite fascinated in your area uh, that you are laureled in because it's not a, a standard one that we have a, uh, across our kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can, can you tell our audience a bit <laughs> about what what your your laurel um, um, is in? So I fell down a certain rabbit hole of uh, mainly Viking padlocks, but also yeah, medieval padlocks and chest locks and pinches, door locks and things. Um, <laughs> All the locks. But, yeah, so I got it was it kind of happened by accident. I was frozen uh, a couple of weeks before we came back here, and I'd finished a project in the Norwegian Central. And I was like, I think I've got time to start a new project with the so two weeks ago, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then I was like, well, I've got all these land grants of Viking Padlock. Uh, so I made two in different designs, both to prototyping. Um, and then I uh, put them on the ANS display table with a little sign that said 10th century Viking padlock. And that was the sum total of his <laughs> sum total of his um, words. words. <laughs> words. <laughs> and Paul Curley packed the pens and sat down and cracked the chair. Yeah. And then about two hours later, I was already cracking the chair. Are those people <laughs> yours? Yeah. People want to talk to you. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> well, you know, I've got a point now. <laughs> so what are your passions, um, Alexandra? Um, I don't really have any. I'm people. <laughs> people. I don't people, people, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and um, I really, our household has been known for bringing newcomers into the groups. We've brought so many newcomers into the SCA, I, I can't even, I can't even count. And a lot of them have stayed and all of them have retained a love for the SCA, even if they can't attend anymore or choose not to. Um, and... That's what I love. I love bringing somebody that's got a curiosity and seeing it develop into a passion, and that's my that's my jam. <laughs> yeah, I just I love seeing passion developing for an art or a combat or archery or any of the facets. I, I'm not picky. I love introducing people to other people that will help facilitate their dreams and ideas. And she's a total stick job groupie. I'm a total stick job groupie. <laughs> I love, I, I love watching fighting, war, tournaments, everything. I just adore it. <laughs> I can't fight myself for, for reasons I won't go into, but um, yeah, if you can't do it, it you, you can still get a lot of passion, a lot of enjoyment out of it. Yeah, absolutely. Especially watching him. <laughs> that's so sweet <laughs> so 
I I know the answer to this, but can you tell us how long that you've been Baron and Baroness for? Uh, yeah, not very. Uh, since January. <laughs> January yeah. this year. Wow. So you really walked straight into the reign of COVID. We yeah. really did. I mean, others did it more so than us. Some, <laughs> yeah, some people yeah. did it mid reign of COVID, but um, yeah, no, we were right at the start. And to be honest, I think it was not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, we've had a very gentle ease into yeah, our... From a rain perspective. From a rain perspective, it's been relatively simple. We've had a turbulent personal life. We've moved from one end of the country to another. We've got new jobs. We put purchased a house. You know, so mundanely, things have been just off the scale as well. But being made Baron Baroness was like the icing on the cake. It was just such an awesome start to the year <laughs> yeah so new, new zealand have been very lucky in um how covid has been mundanely handled but there was still a period of time uh where there was a lockdown um and no sca events so what kind of things were going on in your barony during that time um we had quite a bit of we had quite a bit of uh, online chatter and sharing of projects and, and people people doing multiple multiple computer research on topics and slamming all their information together and coming up with things. And um, a lot of people were doing things like uh, watching Stanzi's you know classes and and online fighting tutorials and. Um, figuring out ways to keep training when they were in lockdown, you know, by tapping into all these resources that suddenly became available globally for the SCA participants, and that was fantastic. Um, us personally, we didn't really feel that we needed to do much more than reassure the populace and let them know that we were here for them if they needed us. Um, and the, the populace was, I mean, the, there was people going supermarket bones to other people and there was all sorts of the populace was working together mundanely very well. Um, and you know, the, the community side of it really came out for us. Yeah, it's fantastic. Very proud. <laughs> uh, but but in, in saying that, our lockdown was a total of six weeks here in South Ringgard. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we said you weren't going to be grody. <laughs> but, but I'm not being gloaty, I'm just saying that, that it really, we know we were blessed. We know we've had really good, mon as you say, mundane governance shit over the situation. And um, we, we've got many friends over in, in the States and in Lockhart that have been, in general, that have been very adversely affected. And we, we acknowledge that. We, we really worry for our friends. Yeah. But we're lucky. <laughs> Here we're lucky. <laughs> so for, for one of the few groups across the known world who's back to relative uh, normal um, events and, and gatherings, is there... Completely is, normal. Completely normal, even better. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there... Are you finding that the virtual content uh, is enriching your game even more, um, having both those uh, avenues, or is it... Is it more that you've just gone back to how things were? No, I think I think it's quite good in that it it provides people a common thing to be talking about when they are in an event. So they might they might bring out a project and say this, and they'll start talking about an online resource, but everyone's seen it, so they've got that common common mm -hmm. language and a common experience to refer back to when they're. And, uh, examining what they're up to so I think in a lot of respects it's still going on people are still talking about it um, there's so. a lots of like YouTube you know people you know the costumers and, and, and heavy fighters and that have put so much out there and people are, 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 are regularly watching that sort of thing it hasn't stopped that that thirst for knowledge which is awesome and, and, yeah, as Grim says, um, being able to go to an event and discuss and share and, um, yeah, disseminate more information is awesome. 
And it's so nice to just be with people. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. And we, we know we know we're blessed. We really do. Do you feel that all of the online content has made the um, the isolation seem a little bit less? Oh, definitely, yeah. I think, I mean, the biggest thing about isolation is having something to focus on. Even if what you're focusing on is what you any different in the videos, that, that's still focusing on something. If you're watching five of them repetitively, you're not going and making it. But, but being told you can't do something does make you <clears throat> miss it. Like, like <laughs> yeah. we, we, we've missed, we planned to go to Spring Wall, we planned to go to Great Northern War, we planned to go to, to Fest, well, Grim was going to go to Festival, and being told, no, you can't. And then still seeing these things, you know, going ahead, and you're just like, no. <laughs> I wish I had more holiday leave so I could just go and do that 14 days. <laughs> down but, yeah. you, you can well, come patient. here now, you just can't go back. Yeah, yeah that's so fun. And who wants that, really? <laughs> well, we don't mind. We'll keep people. That's what we do. <laughs> but no, um, yeah, we, we know you just need to be patient. It's all going to... To resolve itself in one way or another, you know, either we'll all get immunizations or, or it'll fizzle out or whatever will happen will happen and patients will will out. Yeah. And we'll all yeah. be back together again soon. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I have a question about where you guys are because both Australia and New Zealand have natu uh, natural disaster countries. Absolutely. But <laughs> Christchurch itself is uh, quite a bit more unique and it's something that we don't really have in Australia and we don't feel that impact because you've been through quite a few earthquakes yeah. and I know that you guys were directly impacted yeah. um, from the 2010. Yeah, yeah, the first one in September, yeah. my house fell over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That wasn't fun. 4.30 in the morning, nobody should have to wake up with their house falling over, but we're good. <laughs> I'm almost over it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think that, that, that um, the one thing that that did do was it really brought a uh, sense of community together, both with, especially within our SCA friends. Um, we had many, many offers of help. We had... All, in the same way that we see over in, in Terrorosa, the when when it all goes down and it all goes horrible, people band together and try and make it things better for everybody, if they can. Well, what, what was it? It was not even two weeks and had basically a fully furnished flat in cutlery and white wear and just everything. And that was all pretty much from the from the ACA populace. populace and and other friends, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it just kept coming. Just it was just almost ridiculous. I, I you know you, I don't know if Australians are really quite like New Zealanders, but we find it very hard to ask for help. Oh yeah, but yeah, we're very you, similar. But, <laughs> but when you do, you get it, and and people really relish the opportunity to help people. Yeah. 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 For sure. yeah. Um, for a reason. At Canterbury yeah. Fair, we um, have the fighter auction tourney, much like Rowanie does at festi uh, festivals. And um, half of our funds from our fighter auction went to one of the groups in Lockhart that had had their fencing gear burnt down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, that's um, amazing. So even even though we're this far away, we still like to help if we can, give back. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's sometimes you, because you do feel helpless in, when those situations happen, it yeah. is one of the ways that we can all contribute and feel like we have made that little bit of a difference. Agreed, yeah. And, and we know from experience that those things really do make a difference. When you have lost everything, even a little thing, 
hands are on. Yes. Yeah, yes. I, I can't, I, there were so many things that I can't even, I can't even in, start to talk about it. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it was just ridiculous and wonderful. And yeah. Yeah. I feel like the SCA is very unique in that way. Like it's, we are, we are all family in one way or another, even if we've never met. Um, oh, definitely. Yeah, I guess. I, yeah. I grew up in the Land Rover Club, <laughs> and so we'd have like 40 or 50 people and 12 or 15 Land Rovers, and they'd drive into the mountain for a week or so. And to be honest, if, yeah, I think they'd be kind of fun. I don't know if it's that when you actually start camping with people who are really good friends with them, but they start to become a Land Rover or what, but yeah, they would. They would have come in and done whatever to get the stuff that they probably probably wouldn't have been out and so I won't check you out and say, well, <laughs> you've lost nothing, but yeah. <laughs> That'd be helpful in whatever way they know. Yeah, but I know, I think it's, it, it might, I don't know if it's an SCA thing, culture of people within the SCA, or if it's culture of people in the Antipodes, you know, Australians and New Zealanders. Are we just good yeah, buggers, yeah. you know? <laughs> we heard a similar stories from um, our cousins in the in the uh, kingdoms across the states. I think. Yeah, yeah. Something. Okay, maybe all the ECA are just good buggers, me. Yeah. <laughs> I like to yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably a second I need to bite into which causes. You know, just the ECA just to check good buggers or. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Or does it make yeah, them? That may be our new promotional material, SCA, we're good buggers. <laughs> <laughs> so what has been one of your favourite moments in your tenure so far? I know it's been, hasn't been all that long, but um, there must have been some highlights so far. Giving out the Royal Awards last month. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Definitely, yeah. that's that's my high point so far. I mean, it was, it's obviously it's an honour to be able to do it, and it's great to be in that position. But also, it was, yeah, it did take us right back to the pioneer days when it was more normal to stand around Southern Guard to be given that royal award. Um, so there was a bit of nostalgia there for us too. So and others. And others, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lots of the popular, I mean, we handed them out in a dapple sunlit glade outside on a beautiful warm day, and it was just beautiful. It was just lovely. Yeah. Yeah. That's my high point. That's my high point. Yeah. <laughs> Very glad to hear that it was still a, a special moment. I mean, obviously, we would have loved to have to done yeah. it, yeah. but I think that there's also something quite special um, getting these types of awards from people that you know and um, yeah. So. yeah. That's good. We've still got a couple more to go, so. <laughs> Don't give it away. <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> oh, we will, yeah, we will give them away eventually. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> give the surprise away. <laughs> And, but we do understand that we were we were because we we were lucky enough to have Theodora come over at, at for Canterbury Fair this year. You know we um, we know other other baronies have not been as lucky in other groups, and um, yeah, no gloaty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was it, it was lovely. Have you got a high point, or was it the same one? Um, I don't find the same one. Yeah, I was, yeah, I think just overall has been a bit of a high point. You know, yeah. He's been speaking good. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, he's Sometimes. Been, he's been getting up and saying sage words and stuff. It's been quite outstanding. <laughs> yeah, the, probably, probably the baronial anniversary court. 
as part of the court for the baronial anniversary, Rob uh, Grimm, sorry, stood up and recited the lineage of the barons and baronesses that had come before us. Wow. Which was really cool. And many, many of them were, were present at that. Oh, that's that event. awesome. And that, that was sort of hairs on the back of your neck going up, you know. <laughs> it was really cool. Yeah. I think we'll they, keep... uh, <laughs> they are some special moments, especially when you've got that length of history. Yeah. Um, yeah. And across both kingdoms. Yeah. 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 Well, with it, um, yeah, I was part of Leonora's um, retinue when she stepped up as the first Baroness of Southern Guard um, way back when, when Rosetta was two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she's now part of my household, which is just lovely. <laughs> so, yeah. Her saying yes to that was awesome. I'm um, sorry. Um, when I became a Baroness, not of Southern Guard, I caught, had my court barony. It was her coronet that was put on my head when I was made a baroness. So, oh, yeah, wow. that, that goes so, our relationship is threaded so well through everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's, it is those bonds. Like I know for myself, um, the, the bonds that you make and, and the friends that you make through uh, through the SCA and it really enriches our game when those little things happen like to to be made uh, a court be given a court barony with a coronet of a friend or to have a token that is specially bestowed on you by somebody yeah it's it's just amazing I know I cried cried my eyes out I really did <laughs> I was just completely bored my eyes out. I think court is always better when somebody completely embarrasses themselves by being so happy that they that they bore their eyes out. <laughs> and it's I've seen it. From, I've seen it from people on. I've, I've seen it from people on the on the chairs with the pan, fancy hats, and I've seen it. You know, if I see men cry, I lose it. I honestly. I <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's no, it's, it's it's been a wonderful experience this this year, and we're feeling more and more settled into the role, and we can't wait to see what fun things come up. Yeah. Awesome. We're looking forward to visiting, and and for you guys visiting us, that would be an absolute bonus. Oh, look! As soon as we can. Uh, yeah. As soon as we can. <laughs> we've, yeah. We've got a credit with an airline now. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we can't wait till we'll be back together again. Yeah. So this one's for, for you guys to answer separately, but do you have a favourite story to tell? My Queen of Kaid one's pretty up there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My origin. Yeah, it is. It I, is. I, I, I like that one. Most of them are naughty stories, and I'm not going to repeat them here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, that's about fun. misbehaving and getting up to shenanigans and mischief, but you know. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not. I, I, I'm not a peer, but I still know when to speak and when to be silent. <laughs> I don't know if you've got any. What's, what is it? A favourite moment? Favourite story. Favourite story. Oh. Yeah. No, probably not. Same reason? All right. No, so, no, not because they're all naughty, but because most of the best ones are buried in the mist of time. All the so shaggy I, dog stories. So he, I, he talks for hours. He just don't want to get started. Oh, <laughs> I... I as a, a flip to that question, we like we've been playing, being in the SCA for so long. What would one of your proudest moments that you've had be? Um, I know what mine is. 
Yeah. Mine was the Canterbury Fair where Grimm was made a court baron on the Tuesday and then was made a member of the Laurel in a drive-by laureling on the Thursday. It's just like 48 hours of Grimm. <laughs> but no, just watching, first I was just overjoyed at the court baron and, and then when he was made a laurel, I was just, yeah, we had no warning. He wasn't asked ahead of time. It was just sprung right there and then and done right then and there. Wow. That doesn't happen very often in, in Loch Ark. It's, I, I know a few of them, but it's not a common um, uh, happen. It's, and, and not really for a laurel, especially for a laureling, it's, I think, more often an on field night for a Dora, something like that sprung on. But yeah. I don't mind being special. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, um, but that was, it, and it was pretty special. Absolutely. And I think probably my proudest, it's an interesting word, proudest, but my proudest thing's probably ongoing, actually, and it's probably the US Army Combat, um, and I'm hoping to sort of sign and seal that reasonably solid, and then whoever takes over from me has got something to grab hold of and run with. Um, He's done a lot of work bringing the society rules, uh, lock arc rules in line with the society rules. There'd been a lot of changes at society level that hadn't been reflected in the lock arc rules. So that's been a, that, that was his lockdown project. So <laughs> yeah, um, a lot of work. <laughs> but yeah, and watching Watching the look on the kids' faces when they go out there and play with them. So I'm hoping, yeah, I'm hoping it can spread far and wide throughout the kingdom. And and I love it that the children, when they um, they they do take it seriously, and so they'll go to a tournament, and they'll insist that knights do pickups with them after the tournament, and they'll um, Theodoric and um, who was it? I don't know the story. At Canterbury <laughs> Fair this, this year, um, they did a night school, a mini night school on one one afternoon, and there were youth armoured combatants at that night school. That's awesome. Yeah, and they insisted on time. You know, they 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 yeah. the Odoric away from from other mm -hmm. people and said, no, no, it's my turn now. Train me up. You know, <laughs> and they know. Yeah. I want to learn, which is awesome. Yeah, I'm very excited to see where, like, where it goes across yeah. the kingdom because I have seen it um, in in action at Penzik, yeah. and the the joy on the faces of those youth combatants when they come back is amazing. They just love it. Yeah, and that's yeah. and they take it really seriously. It's oh yeah, really absolutely. Good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And Max will be able to do it in like just a couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, first buffer fight on, on the weekend, which was so cute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How did he go? Oh, he loved it. The <laughs> Odric <laughs> <laughs> and I do pal work, and so he was he was all over it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Can't wait to get him an armor. <laughs> he has an amazing stance. <laughs> He's got that fighter stance already. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. There's, there's a, a, a young lady in, a, in one of our groups, and when she um, when she fights, if she gets legged, she she looks she you know she's leaning right back and she's doing gut thrusts and things with full extension and stuff, and it's just awesome. She she fights like serenes, <laughs> but she just. Yeah. <laughs> so we've just had a comment pop up and I have to ask because the question is the statement is Baron Grimm has an has in, has interesting table habits when children are present. <laughs> Do we would you care to elaborate your excellency? Go on, confess. What do you do? 
Uh, well, um, I may have been known to start the odd food fight. <laughs> <laughs> bread, bread fight, bread fight. He, he, he sculpts little balls of bread and sees how far he can flick them and whether he can aim them at particular people, but generally with children. Um, and he generally encourages the children to start flicking them at other people as well. So it's got quite a... Well, there. generally they flick them at me, but they're not being done. It's other people. Collateral damage. It's <laughs> youth combat and siege warfare. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, you need to, to build some little catapults and then build up to trebuchets and, yeah. Yeah. We've got these yeah. little round sweets in New Zealand called jaffers. A kind of orange hard candy yeah and yeah the perfect little ball and they look they do really well in those little seat yeah you know uh tabletop trebuchet things but they're a bit violent yeah. <laughs> they do some damage i think yeah <laughs> free balls are a bit nice. <laughs> but no it's, um there's a lot of scope in this game for fun and we hope that we never lose sight of that and keep having absolutely. it absolutely well, thank you so much, Your Excellencies, for your time tonight. I know it is quite late where you are. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and and you were up early. So, thank you so much for for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, it's been thank a lot you for of fun. Us. Yeah. Great to see you all. <laughs> and thank you uh, for joining us tonight and uh, watching our show. Uh, we will be back on the weekend with some more exciting interviews. Uh, please remember to like, share and subscribe. And for uh, your excellencies, thank you for sharing your stories and bringing us all a little bit closer together. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank and you. See you next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.